Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're gonna talk about the comic book industry. Uh, Requiem for the comic book industry, I think. We're gonna talk about how it seems like more people are interested in the death of the comic book industry than they were interested in keeping comics alive when they had the opportunity to. Uh, that's very interesting. And we're gonna talk about where the hell Snowflake and Safe Space went to. Uh, we have no idea. We have no idea where these characters went to. They're missing. Uh, they're missing from the revised release slate. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. We're over 100,000 subs. Thank you for the support. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so disclaimer, I used to work in the comic book industry. I did for about 15 years. Uh, my wife and I worked uh, off and on on a lot of licensed titles. Uh, I worked primarily on Disney comics. People are shocked that uh, I actually worked in comics, but yeah, I did. And, you know, I kind of jumped out of comics because it didn't pay. Uh, the comic book industry does not pay very well for most people. Now, if you're like a top shelf you know, DC or Marvel person, you're probably going to be making pretty decent money. Uh, but for the rest of us, the rest of us who were never superstars, uh, the money is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. You literally can do anything else and make more money. You could probably go work at Lowe's and make more money. And in my case, uh, I also worked as a marketing guy and a web developer. So I went where the money was. And other than self-publishing our own stuff from time to time and working on web comics, I didn't work in the comic book industry because I had a responsibility. I had a uh, family. I had family to take care of and we had a mortgage payment that had to be paid and a dog that liked to be fed and the comic book industry uh, is not set up in such a way that normal people with normal bills can eke out a living. Anyway, it's interesting to see the media give a shit about comics now. Uh, now at the very end, does the media care about the comic book industry before they cared about the movies? Uh, they would care about comics to put spin on it, you know, to, to give themselves, you know, geek cred points or whatever, but uh, they didn't really seem to care about the actual health of the comic book industry. And the comic book industry was very good at lying to itself for decades about the state it was in. And now we're seeing some backpedaling. Uh, now as the comic book industry, the direct market faces an extinction scenario. Now things are starting to spin up slowly again, and we'll talk about that. But I also want to talk about some outlets that have been um, vehemently defending the health of the comic book industry, even when there was all kinds of evidence to the contrary, and now they're backpedaling. It's it's kind of funny to watch, but yeah, here we go. Polygon, when does Polygon talk about comics? They don't talk about comics that much, do they? Uh, they're mostly a gaming site, but they're talking about coronavirus changing the comic book industry. Uh, look at this, we got a whole timeline. We have a whole timeline, like daily articles about the comic book industry here on Polygon, which is kind of crazy uh, to see. Yeah, I guess the video game news must be slowing down. I think pop culture news is slowing down. So now uh, everybody's gonna be on death watch for comics. Uh, again, this article came out from Fortune. Uh, Fortune uh, yesterday, I think. And they got a quote in there from Steve Jeppy. So when I was a nine-year-old boy reading comics, I never dreamed I'd be the guy to pull the plug on the whole industry, says Steve Jeppy. Diamond is now cautiously preparing to bring the company back online, hoping to fill orders for the third week in May. We're going to talk about that, but restarting will be gradual, and a two-month shutdown has already been enough to potentially reshape the industry. Uh, that's true, because we saw DC decided they were going to step right over Diamond, and they were using a couple other distributors. Uh, we're seeing companies like Alterna Comics uh, see a huge boom in sales because they've decided to sell, sell direct to consumer. And when they're selling to the shops, they're bypassing Diamond completely. This needed to happen sooner. And unfortunately, it took something like this uh, to drive home the fact that people were too reliant on the direct market and also show that the comic book industry isn't as healthy as people try to say it is. Yo, this I thought was very funny. We've got the beat Heidi McDonald's blog. Now this is not written by Heidi McDonald's, this article, but this is so funny because I remember um, Heidi McDonald getting into a huge fight with Jude Terror a couple of years ago about the health of the comic book industry where Jude Terror basically, believe it or not, 
uh, believe it or not, even though he's gone after YouTubers that have said similar things, uh, he did say that the comic book industry was basically hanging by a thread. The direct market system does not work. Comics needs to expand outside of Diamond. Uh, he said all these things in a couple of articles on The Outhousers, and Heidi McDonald took him to task for that. I remember saying like two or three years ago on Twitter that comics was not in a good place and that when Meltdown Comics went out in LA, you know, and that's where all the Hollywood geeks shopped, right? Meltdown went out. I said, that's catastrophic. That is a canary in the coal mine. This is not good. If Meltdown can't survive, then what chance do a lot of the smaller mom and pop shops have? And actually Heidi McDonald called me out on Twitter and was like, no, things are fine. It's all fine, everybody. Um, it's all fine. But here we are, uh, a couple of years later on Comics Beat. Uh, again, this article not written by Heidi, but the coronavirus journal, The Death of the Direct Market. The direct market has been dying for years. Will this be the end? And uh, the writers Brandon Schatz and Danica LeBlanc go on to outline the decline of the direct market and its death that has been hastened at the hands of COVID-19, not started by... Okay, again, COVID-19 only took out the comic book industry because the comic book industry was in a weakened place. I just find it very ironic that sites like The Beat and uh, Bleeding Cool are now talking about how they predicted the fall of the comic book industry, that this was inevitable, that it was going to happen when they spent years, years uh, throwing shade at people who have been saying that, yeah, the direct market is not in a very good place. So now they're they're turning on each other. Comics Beat, Comics Beat is turning on Bleeding Cool on Rich Johnston. Uh, they said Diamond saw an announcement stating that they would be temporarily suspending single-issue comics. They did this in Diamond style with an email stating that Wednesday, April 1st, April Fools uh, would see no new comics, while their website stated April 8th would be the date. Within the short span of time, their website was adjusted. April 1st was confirmed. This all happens after an unscrupulous dingus, that will be Rich Johnston, I'm thinking, reports about the whispers of Diamond shutting down before the statements are ready. I'm not stating the person or the site's name here because the man tends to appear like the world's most impatient version of Beetlejuice, pushing his way into the spotlight with just half a mention of his name. He's truly a drain on the industry. And I'm really too tired to say otherwise. I'm sure if he comments on his own in any way, shape, or form, he'll make it about himself, the star of his own show, or the victim of cruel humans who would call him on his bullshit. It's got to be Rich Johnson. I know Rich Johnson and Heidi McDonald don't seem to have a lot of love for each other. I mean, they are rival comic book sites, uh, but uh, we know exactly where Bleeding Cool is, that they've been lying in the gutters uh, for quite some time. However... Uh, I will say that Rich has has upped his game considerably since all hell broke loose with the comic book industry. Um, so, you know, this is this is not uh, anything new. But let's pop in and see what Marvel is actually going to be shipping when Diamond comes back online. Apparently, they're going to ship a handful of uh, books, a handful of what's already been printed. Uh, so this is Marvel's revised release slate. Now, what's missing from this is the new New Warriors, you know, Safe Space and Snowflake. They're nowhere to be found. Uh, maybe they're holding them for this fall. Maybe they're holding them indefinitely. Maybe maybe they, they got sick. Maybe they can't make it uh, to the Marvel Universe. Uh, we can only hope. Coming from Newsarama, with Diamond's direct market distribution seemingly back up and running, I don't think it's going to be at full capacity uh, anytime soon. Marvel Comics has released a revised schedule for its comic book releases from May 27th through July 8th, and although 26 titles are listed, there are a lot of issues not on the schedule. Specifically, here are some titles you won't be seeing for at least the next two months. X-Men, Captain America, Fantastic Four, Wolverine, Spider-Man, or Spider-Woman, Gwen Stacy, Conan the Barbarian, and Star Wars are the highest profile ongoing titles that are missing. Black Widow and Taskmaster are missing. Other notable absences. The entirety of the outlawed subline of titles. Champions, Power Pack, and New Warriors. There is no, no safe space. No snowflake. Former titles that are MIA, Runaways, and Strike Force, Punisher vs. Barracuda, Atlantis Attacks, and Force Works, uh, yada yada. 
Um, in a statement which announced the new schedule, a Marvel spokesperson stated this was a balanced release schedule as the industry continues to restart distribution and comic shops begin to reopen to adapt to current social distancing policies. In other words, some retailers might be fully operational while others at, are at limited capacity or closed completely. Um, this was a point of contention for Brian Hibbs, who owns multiple comic shops in San Francisco. Brian Hibbs had uh, basically a meltdown now I've enjoyed his I've enjoyed his uh, commentary on the comics industry, and he is a numbers guy. He does a good job crunching numbers, but he was very very salty that people who live in parts of the country that are not in complete lockdown uh, or have not been as affected as major metropolitan areas. Again, he's in San Francisco. Uh, as shop owners try to reopen in like Arizona or Texas or in the Midwest or something like that. Uh, he seemed very upset that they were allowed to do so. He seemed uh, pretty upset with uh, DC, I believe, if I remember correctly, DC doing an end run around Diamond. But you know what? People got to make money. If they can make money, they're going to make money. Um, clearly, Marvel's interested in making money because they're not bringing out, bringing out New Warriors, which is a dumpster fire. Nobody wants this book. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants a non-binary character, the first non-binary character in Marvel Comics history, uh, apparently, to be called uh, Snowflake. Very, very stupid. Nobody's on board with this. So Marvel has not announced which titles are among those on a work hiatus and which are simply coming out later as a result of scheduling changes. Yeah, they put a lot of creators on hiatus, pencils down, you know, and I'm thinking... Disney might uh, might put those pencils down permanently for some of these people, for some of these books, because I don't think they're going to have the money that they had six months ago. They're not going to be able to have they're not going to have the extra change to publish a bunch of comic books that aren't going to sell. I think you're going to see a leaner, a, a much, much leaner Marvel after this. If Disney doesn't decide to just shut the damn thing down entirely because comic books, look, the margins aren't there. They don't make a ton of money. You know, so uh, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, nobody wanted Snowflake and Safe Space. Now you're going to have to wait even longer to get your uh, dismal dose of these ridiculous, ridiculous characters. Yeah, yeah, we've been saying this. Come on, come on. Give us a hat tip. We've been saying this. How you do, fellow kids? Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Just a, an update on the comic book industry. And uh, it does seem like things are lurching back to life, but I don't think it's ever going to go back to normal. I don't think it's ever going to go back to the way it was. I think, again, if you are publishing comic books, uh, you better have a plan B because there is no guarantee that any of these distributors are going to stay in business long term. You better start working on having a backup direct to consumer or through Amazon or, or something, because I think we're going to see the direct market. Uh, I think we're going to see it die within the next couple of years. You know, I think this is um, inevitable. You know, a lot of the comic shops that uh, buy the bulk of books are located in urban areas that are going to be on lockdown for quite some time yet. And uh, we never know if this is going to happen again. So I would say have a plan B. Absolutely. Going to wrap it up. We'll talk later. Hey, guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.